Welcome to Melt. I'm Suresh Venkat. Today we are coming to you from the head office of food service company Jubilant Foodworks, better known as the master franchisee for Domino's Pizza in India, Nepal, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. Jubilant also handles other brands including Dunkin and Popeyes. Today though, we are diving deep into the journey of the Domino's brand in India. 2023 has been a year filled with innovations on the marketing front for the brand. To know more, we are in conversation with Sandeep Anand, the Executive Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer for Domino's India. How important is affordability for the Indian consumer? What's new in the dine-out and delivery space? And how do you cater to the Indian taste buds? Let's find out as we get ready to melt with Sandeep Anand. Sandeep, welcome to Melt. It's been quite a year for Domino's, hasn't it? Innovations, products, new markets, territories, all of that. How has the year been for you? And I ask this in the context of a three-year lockdown. And we're coming out, people are back in stores, people are eating out again. So how has that, that year treated Domino's? See, the food industry has undergone a sea change after COVID. Uh, COVID changed many eating habits, even dine in or dine in out habits. Everything has changed for the industry. And this year has been almost a continuation of that trend which started in 2020. Uh, we as a company have adapted ourselves. We have always been a delivery strong company. So that delivery is something which as a trend went up during COVID times and has continued to be strong even after COVID has ended. What has changed after the opening up of the world post COVID is really Dine-In. Dine-In is also coming back again. And with our uh, span of almost 1850 restaurants across India, Domino's has been the lead in capturing that dine-in surge which has been coming back for us. We have also innovated a lot after COVID. There's been a slew of product launches in the last one year itself. If I've talked about, we launched a range of pizzas starting at 49. We launched a gourmet range. We launched another range of spicy pizzas catering to the Indian palette of spicy food. So it's been a very exciting year for us on innovation, on channels where we play and even geographies. We have kind of invested in smaller tiers or lower tier towns and expanded our footprint in those uh, towns and really kind of been there working towards becoming a real neighborhood pizzeria of India. So Sandeep, help us understand the marketers point. On one hand, you're launching a 49 rupee pizza. On the other hand, in the same sentence, you talked about gourmet and premiumization. How does one person switch gears between 49 rupees and premium? How does it happen in the same company and the same person? Couple of things here. Uh, India is actually a land of many Indias. And it's not just us, but even the CPG, FMCG space embodies that. And there are many other categories I can think of who embody that. Uh, food is no different. There will be a TG who will potentially want to have a pizza at 49. There'll be a TG who has been exposed to the gourmet range, maybe because of the kind of places they have been visiting, the kind of places they have been eating and actually need that kind of a product range coming from a brand. So it's really catering to two different Indias. The gourmet range caters to the higher end consumer. The uh, 49 range caters to a lot of static value conscious 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 people who are entering the category, people who wanted to be a effective value for money option just a quick on the go meal or maybe just uh, in a group setting have actually multiple pizzas there so they are both different tgs which are there what is uh, important from a brand point of view is that the brand actually also talks to those different tgs uh, as per the need which they have so like we talk about uh, 49 is our hero when it comes to uh, our dine-in uh, mm-hmm. dine in uh, in terms of our dine in channel and 49 is something which works very well for that channel gourmet is uh, gourmet range is something which talks uh, to the premium audiences and we really target them very in a sharp shooted way uh, there are obvious media choices which we make to target them digital and the, with the digital uh, medium being available it's actually very uh, much easier i would say not very easy but much easier to target them in a sharp shooted way so for both tgs the right product is actually positioned for them and the right price points as per their value consciousness. So help us understand this. So one group of your target audience thinks you are a value for money brand and another group thinks of the same brand Domino's as a premium brand. As a marketer, how do you pull off this balance? How do you pull off this juggle? See, I think Domino's first and foremost is a brand which is known for 30 minutes delivery. Second, for great pizzas at a great price. 
सो दो टू टेनेट्स ऑन विच द ब्रांड इज नोन फॉर और बेस्ड ऑन इवन वेन आई टॉक अबाउट से द वैल्यू कॉन्शियस कंज्यूमर द ग्रेट प्राइस एंड ग्रेट प्रोडक्ट प्लेस टू दैम वेदर इट्स इन डिलीवरी और इन डाइनिंग even to the gourmet users the great product coming at a good price which also makes it vfm or value for money is something which is common and of course the 30 minute delivery is something which is common across both the categories so while you may think that they are two very different brands they are commonalities or the base or the foundation of the brand is still on 30 minute delivery and great pizza at great prices so 30 minutes and great pizza at great price whether absolutely. it's at the bottom end or the premium absolutely price. even in gourmet we we follow that same tenet but in bangalore you're experimenting with 20 minute delivery yes yes <laughs> what is the need to save those extra 10 minutes is or saving that extra 10 minutes i think uh, all of us know that customer delight is the biggest factor which encourages repeats or mm-hmm. encourages loyalty for the consumer mm-hmm. and when we talk to consumers actually the time of delivery is something which they value and that's why how the brand dominos was built 30 minute delivery was something which was a first it was known for yeah, that yeah. yeah first for dominos and for the industry per se uh, over a period of time what has happened is that we have improved in our processes mm-hmm. we have also improved in our store density mm-hmm. it's something actually which is there's a method behind it how we are aiming to get to that goal and as i said shaving or basically optimizing few of the processes saving actually seconds is something which Makes is happening inside the store okay 5 seconds here 3 seconds there put together if you shave off a minute or two inside the store along with that the store density part really helps in us reducing drive times that's the key which we are doing what it translates into as a consumer benefit is even more hotter and fresher pizzas mm-hmm. which lands up in their home and uh, that's really the But consumer I delight consumers are delighted to absolutely, receive a pizza absolutely absolutely the bangalore experiment is something which is uh, a testimony of that and we are in the process of expanding it to a few more cities that will happen sometimes and operationally soon. how much stress is it putting on the system at the back end are you able to pull it off easily it's been led by a lot of experimentation first mm-hmm. to optimize store processes once the optimization has happened then it's standardized across that city for example a city like bangalore will be following the same steps within the store which have been identified as critical mm-hmm. or important to deliver the 20 minute delivery promise which we have mm-hmm. once the experimentation in a particular store is done then it standardized across all stores of the city so it becomes a way of life for operations sandeep you're present in what nearly 400 cities across uh, across tier 1 tier 2 and tier 3 india yeah. how different is it to market pizza to customers in tier 2 and tier 3 see it's very interesting when you actually talk to consumers of the different tiers and especially the tier 2 3 4 in terms of their aspirations or in terms of their awareness of dominos as a brand they actually have similar aspirations to tier 1 town consumers mm-hmm. in terms of their awareness to dom- awareness of dominos they have sufficient awareness of dominos what was lacking possibly till now was the availability of the product which dominos in the last few years have really kind of solved for in the last 5 odd years we would have added uh, 600 700 stores on an average over the last 5 years and that's what basically makes uh, uh, solves for the availability problem in the low tier towns now dominos as a menu if you look at the dominos menu there are enough and more options for every tg whether it's mm-hmm. a tier 1 audience or whether it's a tier 2 3 audience and honestly if you ask me in every tier there is a different set of audience mm-hmm. there will be a upper middle class audience in tier 1 also and someone who's very very value seeker in tier 1 similar would be the case there will be a gourmet customer in tier 3 yes, and a value customer yes, in tier 3 yes the size of that, that customer TG. set or tg right. may differ in the different cities mm-hmm. but dominos as a menu actually has enough and more options for every customer so who's out there roughly the same menus rolled yes. out in tier 2 and tier 3 what we do is what we do is basically push or basically make hero products slightly different in different tiers uh, and at one point in time we also had a small town menu mm-hmm. when we were actually entering the first few cities or the we were going deeper yeah. into the town classes what we realized is that possibly a small town menu can be the hero with which we can start with so does it reflect local taste for instance not local taste but definitely a 
penetrative price point. But that was uh, many years ago. What has happened is over a period of time as the scale of dominoes has increased and as we have made some of those price points a part of the regular menu, mm -hmm. it's no longer basically applicable. But yes, we have, uh, we have, uh, you pointed and talked about the regionalization or local flavors. We have catered to the regional palate also. Uh, in fact, uh, last year we launched something known as the flavors of east range mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which was a durga puja launch for us last year and we did uh, version 2.0 of that in this year we had even uh, we introduced a couple of more flavors which are very traditional east and i don't know kosha mangsho is a very uh, famous one of my favorite dish. dishes kosha mangsho. absolutely malai chingri which is yes. prawns yes. and then champaran mutton mm -hmm. so those are the stuff which we have actually launched this year uh, as a part of our initiative of Flavors of East. Sandeep, besides delivery, you're also giving your uh, stores a facelift. Does this mean a lot of people are coming back into Domino's stores to physically eat there? And what is this facelift going to achieve? See, as I talked about, uh, post-COVID, there has been a resurgence in dine-in which has happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, dine-in has always been a channel which has somewhat been preferred by youth, etc., who prefer to hang out along with their friends in an environment. Over a period of time, every store in our network of 1850 plus stores, we identify stores which are above a certain aging and we give them a facelift. Mm -hmm. Either that's a criteria or a criteria of if that's a high volume store and if it needs some sort of facelift, we give that. So there are certain set of internal criteria which we give them. More important is why a facelift is needed. Because see, one of the key drivers of dining channel is ambience. As I said, a lot of youth visit these stores. When you are outside, you are in that mode of sitting, even when you are with family, you are in the mode of sitting in a good place, which is inviting, which is warm, which is something where you feel good about sitting and chatting with your friends, family mm -hmm. and eating as a family or friends go. Our idea of giving a facelift is to live up to that expectation of the consumer. And wherever we see that a store has exceeded maybe a certain life or a certain degree of ambience, because our domino standards are very high on the ambience aspect, mm -hmm. we make sure that the store is given a face uplift. And when the uplift has happened, definitely we see a, a proportionate result. In yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, the first entry point or the first place where you, uh, the first decision point is, okay, how's that place looking? Let's go inside and maybe sit there for a while or browse something which you're looking to shop. That does play a role on the human psyche. And uh, as you say that first you evaluate with your eyes and then, and then you experience with your, with your nose. And then you experience and the then product. Your, then absolutely, yes. absolutely. So Sandeep, who do you consider to be your competition? Other QSR chains, <laughs> local dosa restaurants, who is your competition for Domino's for uh, share of wallet, share of mind? Contrary to popular belief, uh, pizza is something which is very well penetrated. Uh, it is something which is uh, which has a high awareness also. Uh, but at the same time, I think the share of wallet which pizza as a category enjoys is still much lesser versus its awareness levels or ever tried pace. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, for us, I think it's not definitely just other QSRs. I would put other cuisines as really competition. A North Indian, a South Indian, Local a Chinese, Chinese yeah. burger chains. Everyone would be a competition because a consumer is having a decision of I am going to eat non-home food today. Right. I am going to eat from outside. Whether I order, eat, yeah. Yeah, whether order, I order home or whether I go out and eat, I am not eating home food today. Okay. And at that point in time, the idea is you increase the relevance of pizza. And we being the market leader, obviously expect that we will get the most share of uh, increasing the relevance of pizza. So therefore, if that's your decision point, you are not just fighting versus a QSR or a burger chain or a fried chicken You're chain. fighting versus you any impulse. Any, any impulse food. You are fighting against a dal makhani, a butter chicken, any and everything or a dosa. All of that is. Yeah, everything is on the table, okay. which you need to fight against. All right, Sandeep, on that note, let's talk about your media mix. Let's talk about traditional media. Sure. How do you divide your budget between, say, TV, print, outdoor, all the traditional formats of media? TV is still the king and TV gives you the fastest. And this is linear TV. This yeah, is yeah linear TV, TV I'm talking about. See, uh, sometimes when we sit in boardrooms, etc., we think every everyone is on digital, everyone is on a computer. Everyone is like us. And uh, Domino's is possibly not that brand, but in uh, some of the other brands I have worked in in my past life, uh, I have always told consumers that can you 
tell me if this is what a consumer sitting in kanpur mm-hmm. or this is what a consumer sitting in a indore or a nagpur or a mysore will think or perhaps down the road from your house absolutely. may also be different absolutely. from you absolutely right? within haryana if i had to go to yeah. rohtak yeah. will that consumer also think like you are thinking because what we think sitting in possibly a gurgaon or a mumbai is not applicable to across india so coming back to the media point i think tv is still a very very dominant, a dominant force, force linear tv which is there but it varies by brands like for example as dominoes as a brand we know that our point of entry is very critical mm-hmm. we need to associate with the consumer when they are in that age and gen z is an audience which is currently feeding that funnel of our future consumers mm-hmm. gen z is more targeted or better targeted i would say by digital mm-hmm. and within digital also specific choices which we we'll need to make so traditional media therefore takes a back seat there mm-hmm. but within traditional media tv is there uh print and outdoor even today in lower tier towns when you have to do a targeted campaign mm-hmm. and sharp shooting for example if x cities or promotion yeah yeah x cities which are not maybe working very well you need to do an intervention you definitely can't do a tv there a print or a radio or a outdoor mm-hmm. surprisingly outdoor costs are very less mm-hmm. in actually tier 3 4 towns you can get a very good, good visibility plan. yeah okay. good visibility outdoor plan up and running at a fraction of a cost mm-hmm. and it's effective in terms of reach okay. so you will have to make those choices in traditional but if uh, specifically when you are shooting sharp shooting on specific geographies but at a overall all india basis i think linear tv still has its own merit then is it my perception that we used to see a lot of dominos advertising on linear tv and we don't see that many spot new spots these days you may not be, be the tg let, I may me, not be TG. <laughs> let me be black so the pace <laughs> and the quantity of advertising hasn't mm-hmm. reduced i'm just not being targeted yes, anymore because see there's a certain age group the younger age group first jobbers people with kids young kids etc are our core tg and our media plan effectively in terms of that targeting does that mm-hmm. also what has happened is that we have over indexed our investments on digital mm-hmm. because as i said gen z is a big funnel for us mm-hmm. and that's a shift which brands need to do they need to understand that where is their funnel and where is their recruitment going to happen but you can't let go of where your existing consumer is also there so you'll have to do a balancing act between the two so the payroll professionals in our 40s and 50s uh, trying to understand the minds of gen z or so maybe in their teens or 20s so in your marketing team would you hire a couple of gen z people or hire hire a couple of 19 year old marketers just to understand how they think uh not 19 year old uh, but definitely i try and over index on the younger the younger lot yes the yes okay. and see it's been a habit which uh, i have very consciously inculcated in myself is also and i ask my immediate uh, team also to do that is whenever in doubt talk to a gen z Okay. and we actually uh, do that first in office people who are in that age bracket mm-hmm. we get them into a room and many a times just tell them oh, this is the idea mm-hmm. you tell us okay and whether it works for you or not as an individual and preferably non marketing folks is what, what we try and gather uh, you'll be very surprised with how vocal they are with mm-hmm. their choices and the likes and dislikes they both woke and vocal both absolutely yeah. absolutely and sometimes they do surprise you so it's become a way of life for me that i consciously check with the gen z because that's a must have check for us okay. next let's talk about your loyalty program it's been how many years since a loyalty program almost one and a half years almost one and a half years has it worked out for you has it worked out for the brand absolutely it's actually one of the biggest what works and what doesn't work both Uh, we were the first big brand to actually launch a loyalty program in india uh, last count publicly listed numbers we've uh, got almost 16 million users mm-hmm. on board to the loyalty program till now our emphasis has been on enrollment and uh, we have achieved a, uh, that goal with mm-hmm. a great degree of success mm-hmm. uh, the challenge and therefore the task cut out for us is now that we have this huge set of users who are become a loyalty member they they obviously are benefiting the business in their own way currently the challenge is how can we maximize that benefit for the business by making them more uh, feel more special making them actually order more that's the part which is the journey now we are traveling mm-hmm. so the first leg or phase 1 as i call it 
has been a success on the enrollment front. Now it's a matter of using that base to enhance frequency, ticket size, making them feel special. Having the community a, of absolutely community of affinity, lovers. brand love. Okay. That's the core constituency you build. And honestly, if you ask me, loyalty is the biggest moat which the business typically has. That core consumer base is the uh, difference versus. Uh, basically some of the other brands which have not been successful. All right, Sandeep, I'm going to end this interview with a couple of personal questions for sure. you. Sandeep, you have led several power brands in the past from FMCG to healthcare. Tell me one thing that marketing, pizza and fast food has taught you. If I had to talk about pizzas and fast food, I think the product experience mm -hmm. is something which is paramount. Mm -hmm. You can give a great ambience, you can deliver in 15 minutes also. But if the food is not good, everything goes for that's a toss. That's the moment of absolute that's, truth. That's the baseline. Because if that goes wrong, everything, nothing else nothing will make it up matters. for make up for it. You can give it for free if all I care basically. So definitely in pizza is the product experience. Mm -hmm. Certain other brands though, it may be slightly different. Mm -hmm. Like uh, if I talk about another brand I have worked on, uh, which is wheat, this is the hair removal cream. It used to be the imagery. When I kind of inherited the brand, it was hair removal was still a fuddy duddy category. It was something which was done in the washroom and maybe not you considered as a personal care product. Wheat had a scorching pace of growth because it tried to revolutionize the category and make wheat as a brand, which is more of a personal care brand mm -hmm. and change the imagery of it as a beauty accessory mm -hmm. rather than being a feminine hygiene kind of a product. So imagery there plays a bigger role, not just the product experience. So that uh, uh, plays a difference. If I talk about Dettol, another brand which I worked on, it's trust. Mm -hmm. Beauty of it was that the Promise of 99.9% .9 germ kill. That's the core. That's, That's the core. You have to believe that promise. And then it travels across categories. So in every brand, in every category I yes. was in, one it's… One key yes. insight or one brand Absolute. key that… Absolutely. All right, so the final question to you. Since you're an expert on pizza, we have to ask you this question. Who put pineapple on the pizza first? Honestly, I have no clue. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's been a debate which we have been having in our own kitchen also. Okay. Should we get a pineapple pizza on board and sell it to customers? Do you like pineapple on pizza? No, I don't actually. Okay, I, have to admit that I actually like pineapple on pizza. <laughs> I've been the guy who's been saying, no, let's not launch it. <laughs> Sandeep Palan, thank you very much for talking thank to Belt. It's been a pleasure. Same there, same there. Thank you so much. And with that, it's a wrap on this episode. You can follow Melt on social media. The handle is ready to melt or simply log on to readytomelt.com. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Suvenk on X, formerly known as Twitter. Till next week, goodbye and thanks for watching. <laughs>